Hi there. I'm going to be doing a few videos that just cast a spotlight on particular probability distributions that you're likely to come across when you're doing probabilistic sensitivity analysis. Each one of these videos should be fairly short and sweet. So without any further ado, let's start off by looking at the beta distribution. The beta distribution is excellent for modeling probabilities. It has two parameters called alpha and beta. And if x is distributed according to the beta distribution with parameters alpha and beta, then its expected value is alpha divided by alpha plus beta, and its variance is given by this formula in the bottom left. But if we look over here on this uh, graph on the right, we'll be able to see the sorts of distributions that we can produce with the beta distribution. The first thing to notice is that it's always going to have a value between 0 and 1. <clears throat> and that's one of the reasons why it's very good for modeling probabilities. If alpha and beta are the same, so if we look here at this green uh, one where alpha and beta are both 0 0.5, uh, that's a symmetric distribution. So the um, <clears throat> it's just as likely to take a low value as a high value. When alpha and beta are both 1, you actually get the uniform distribution. And when alpha and beta are 4, you get something that looks a bit like a, uh, a bell curve. When alpha is less than beta, like in this uh, yellowy orange curve, it's more likely that you will get a low value out of it. And when alpha is greater than beta, for example, in this red line, you're more likely to get a high value. So if we were in our model already calculating a probability by dividing x by n, then we can use the beta distribution um, in the PSA for that probability. Um, and we'll set alpha equal to x plus some number c. And we'll set the beta parameter to n minus x and then plus c again. Um, and typically we would use c equals 0 or c equals a half. When you use c equals a half, that's called the Jeffreys prior. That's what I would typically use. Um, and just to show you how you implement it in Excel and in R, <clears throat> here it is in Excel. So we've got our two parameters here, alpha and beta. As I said, in the deterministic, you just want the mean of this distribution. So that's alpha divided by alpha plus beta. For the probabilistic, we're going to use this beta.inv function, and then we're going to pass it a random number between 0 and 1, and then our two parameters. And in R, the code that you need to run is R beta, and then you give it the number of random variables you want it to produce, and then alpha and beta are the two parameters.